The Nikki Glazer Podcast. Here's Nikki. Hello, here I am. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Glazer Podcast. How's everyone doing today? It's an extra episode this week. We've covered it all, but we're going to keep going. Um, Brian and Noah are here. <laughs> Comedy so what veterans. You're today is a bunch of leftover bullshit that we. Yeah, sorry guys. This is, the scraps. Out of our ass. <laughs> yeah. this is the scraps. Brian, are you getting a lot of feedback on Bon Appetit? Yeah, a good amount of feedback. Yeah, people are excited. Um, there was one person in particular who was very important to me who I, I don't want to call out, mm. but I texted them the uh, article without comment. You know, just like, here's the article. I, I texted it to a bunch of important people. And then they like responded. Like important people in your life or people that like. Yeah, like important people in my life. And you didn't say like, hey, check, like I'm in this. You just like sent it I, I mean, without it's any context. I mean, I, I guess mean, every, it is. Everybody who received it was like, oh my God, it's amazing. Whoa, yes, it's yes. so good. It's so okay. well written. Yeah, that's And then this point. one person wrote back three hours later. Cool. Oh. <laughs> with no with no that's it just cool was it a sibling no no is it someone uh, in, that is in the business no no what? this person should be much more effusive to something like this i don't want to say who it is because i don't this. want to like call them out but i just feel like did you it's a little bit more than up just it <laughs> or did you just write okay with a period back like what is that no i, I just did nothing I just did nothing. Cool. Like, did they write cool with a period or cool exclamation mark? Just cool. No, no punctuation. punctuation. Yeah. Mm, like, did they heart it too? No, no. Mm. Just cool. And I was like, what the fuck? I what mean, does it take? Is this someone who's who you what, what would you have expected out of this person? A cool with an exclamation mark? I'm so proud of you. Uh, parents oh, it was a mom. <laughs> oh no way did your mom write cool no i'm not way. saying who it was i'm not saying who mom. it was wait, wait. male or female male or female well, based I'm not on saying what, any this reaction further. i don't even think this person's listening to this podcast because they don't have an investment in the things you do oh my god i'm sorry people can be so disappointing that's it's it's you know, she could have been, he or she could have been <laughs> distracted at the time, but th it is so much more than cool if yeah. someone that you are a blood relative of, and I'm not talking like, if you are, a cousin can write cool, a sister can't write cool. You mm. gotta have, have more than that. Can we all just step it up with celebrating things in other people's lives a little bit more? Like, it's like, yeah. just, and it doesn't matter what's, what it is. Like, if it's cool to them, like, be excited for people. And yes. and also, if someone's sending you something, and I'm just like, I gotta say, I've been so like, I'm just like so disappointed in people lately for other people. Like, you're not even asking me to be disappointed <laughs> on at this person for you. I mean, it's kind of you brought it up in a way of like, it's a little bit of like, what? But I'm fucking annoyed at people lately. I didn't even want to go off on a tirade about it, but ah, a tirade. He, this here's a tirade. We love a tirade. It's about money. If oh, you yeah. are rich and someone in your family who you love isn't and they are struggling at all with money and you do not lend, loan them an amount of money that you do not need and you will not think about or even notice is missing, you're a bad person. And I just need mm. to reiterate that. Like it, I'm talking to you, person who's listening to this, who has someone in their life. And I, I think I've said it before, but it needs to be repeated. If they're not, if they are not suffering with a psychosis, if they are properly medicated, even if they have like a bipolar tendencies and they maybe were crazy before and like you wouldn't have loaned them money. If they have been stable for over two years, you give them money. You're yeah. not like you got, you got to do this. Stop being stingy. What do you, you're not going to notice that money. I, so many people in my life are like, I'm, you know, I'm struggling. I, I lost sleep last night because we just don't know if we're going to be able to afford this trip. And, and, and it's like. Or like this, this, we want to move, but we have to stay in this place we don't want because, or we have to downsize to this place we don't want. And I'm like, your brother has a hundred million dollars. What is <laughs> happening? What's going on? Your brother who you're not estranged from. What's going yeah. on? How could that brother know, like know that their brother is moving to a small place and not go, here's 10 grand. It's literally does not matter to me because I have a hundred million dollars. Yeah. I just got mad at my mom last night because she, we went out to dinner. <laughs> And um, 
and I've really had a talk with her recently about like you got to stop this whole thing of like when I get things for you when I pay for things this whole muck we have to trudge through of like no it's too much and I'm like yes, you have to know that right. if I'm buying it and I say I'm going to I don't need to do this little dance with you of you saying it's too much and I go no it's not and then we we and then it always ends with me buying it it's never not going to I wouldn't offer it if I couldn't afford it I'm not someone who is bad with money I have people that help me not be bad with money trust me but last so I just had to talk with her about it literally two days ago and then Hold last on, what night, did she say she Pause. said, what did she say when you brought that up? Was she going to well, try? Well, first she goes, you spend too much money. Oh, You're boy. spending too Judgment. much. Because she found out some <laughs> money I've lent uh, someone who needed it. You spend too much money, Nikki. I'm worried about that. Like, literally that kind of tone out of nowhere. And then I was like, I need you to know that I have people and looking after me who I trust very much who know that I don't, sp I literally don't spend a lot of money compared to their other clients. Like I'm okay. And, um, I said, mom, this is the amount I have. You need to Google this amount of money and see what people can do with that amount of money. <laughs> like I literally was like, I, I just, I, this is what I needed to do. Like when you, you don't know because you're still living from a place of like, I, yes. I'm just scraping by. So she's right. thinking I'm always scraping by and that because I'm spending all the stuff on people's hotels and flights or whatever it is that I'm just like hemorrhaging money constantly. And I was just like, you need to look at what the spending habits of someone with this amount can do. And you need to like relax and, and just trust me. And she said, I will say I, <laughs> I, I sleep at night a little bit better because I know that, you know, no matter what, like, because you have been so generous that, and I go, you should sleep Aww. well at night. If you ever were in financial straits, I would bail you out. Like I have the ability to do that. I am a si single person with a big income and I, and I would take care of you. There's no question about it. You, I want, that's the greatest gift. It's the reason I do this is that you, I want you to live longer. So you're, so you get good sleep and you're not like my mom's stress about money is like ruins her body. You know what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. And it ruins yes. everyone's body. So if you are putting your family through this, when you could bail them out and you're making your sister and brother-in-law or whatever it is, or your, or your best friend, and you have $10,000 laying around that you literally would not do anything with a good investment. You can even say, pay me back when you're able to get on your feet. But if the person is not an addict or yep. has psychosis, you're a bad, bad family member. If you're not lending the money, you're, Fuck, yeah. you literally suck. And I don't like you. There's, I think there's, a, there's some twisted backwards honor and being like, well, I earned this money and people you didn't. all that. Yeah. Cool. Think about it. This you way. didn't. The, the salaries that people get for their jobs are random and don't make Thank sense. Thank you, Brian. They are and random EMT, and don't make sense. An EMT who saves people's lives on the day gets $15 an hour. And then the CEO of a tech company that delivers you a, a Nestle quick drink in three minutes gets like $700 million. And then a $50 million dollar bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a 50 million. So it, like teachers are getting paid $50,000. If you have a cousin who is a teacher and they don't have enough money and they're p p putting money out of their pocket to buy their kids school supplies and you work at, uh, I don't know, a fucking oil company for no <laughs> reason, doing marketing for Sunoco. from your dad... Yeah. You didn't earn it. And I'm yeah. guessing he, and if he got it from his grandfather, neither did he. So a lot, like, I have a friend whose parents are like hoarding a bunch of money until they die. Then, sh then they'll get the money. And, mm -hmm. and my friend is like, well, m you know, my dad really believes in hard work and earning. And I go, he didn't earn it. He got it yeah. from his dad. And she was like, whoa, she didn't even she didn't even she hadn't even thought of it i go he's hoarding it until he dies so he wants you to get this when you're 70 because he's gonna live to 93 so he wants to, you to get this money and he's not even so if you're someone who's like i'm not gonna give my kids money till i die you don't want to see them have fun with that money and like live a better right. life because of it you want to wait What's till the they're purpose? in their 60s or 70s What's the purpose of it what is the, what is the exactly what is the purpose of it and and you're so right brian like people 
people think people always say this to me nikki you you work so hard yes i do but i do work as hard as other people i see who don't earn as much as me okay i really see that all the time and so i don't i'll I'll say yes i work hard i'll let that in but the amount of money i make based on how i work does not make sense based on other people's incomes and how much they work let's talk about my sister who has three kids and was working a full-time job until she quit teaching because it didn't pay enough for how much she was working let's talk about that like she moms are working so hard they're not getting paid literally anything even by the government Mm -hmm. who should be paying them to have kids because we don't have people having kids anymore unless they you know like it's that's kamala joe biden and kamala are trying to do that fyi they're trying to increase the child tax credit it's 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 just like i i just if you have money and you don't like because my mom the other day was like nikki what you did for so and so you are just so generous. And I wasn't trying to be a hero, but I was like, you have to stop saying this because I don't, I, I know that it's technically generous compared to other people, but I really believe everyone should be doing exactly what I did in the circumstance. If you had the amount of money I had and you had a person in your life who uh, you loved very much, who needed money, it should not be generous to share that money. I, I just I, and I wasn't trying to it sounded like I was being a martyr because I was like I really need you to stop using the word generous I'm not generous but I was like no this isn't coming from a place of being like oh, I'm just I'm just a kind person it's just in me I literally don't think it's I'm not a, I, I'm kind in many ways this is not a kindness this is literally like I just you just do it because it's you are save. lucky can I mm-hmm. so I as a person who was on the receiving end of it um, a friend of mine when I was in college, I was so broke. I was so stressed over money. I couldn't pay my credit card bill. It was just like mounting and mounting with interest charge. And my friend just helped me pay it off. Ugh. And he never asked for that money back. I did eventually pay him back. But just to like say, here, take that, pay off your bill so you can just breathe a little bit and then just like not have to owe, like feel like I owe my friend anything. Yeah. Just, like just like mm. selfless giving um was ugh, what a relief i can't it's even tell you I, I remember it honestly it 20 feels years selfish later. to me be- i told my mom i was like honestly i get off on it not because i'm like i'm such a good person i just like that whoever can breathe easier when they're looking for a new job which they were scrambling to find one and getting desperate and being like do i pay for um you know linkedin plus i don't really i can't really afford it because i can't i'm looking for a job but like i'm like how about you take this money that i don't even care about and that i could spend on some lavish vacation and you sleep at night what a great gift to give someone and it doesn't yeah. make me feel money. i just don't i don't think it should be about general it's not like i should be a pl- my mom's just like not a lot of people would do that and i'm like well that's what's wrong with the world i maybe mm-hmm. i'm just le- i just feel like i just think if you tried it out people out there who have a lot of money and you just gave a little bit to people who don't ask you know i'm not if people are begging you for money over and over that gets it's annoying different. and i do have some people on my dms that listen to the podcast that beg for money and i get it and i and on i probably would do the same thing i can't help out strangers it 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 does have a limit and sometimes i do sometimes yep. it's like it it you give I, to I, charities yes i i give a lot but i'm just talking about people in your close life who you care about whose happiness honestly impacts your own life why wouldn't you make their life easier they're more fun to be around so yep. last night i'll tell you what happened last night at dinner because i just couldn't I, I like I, I talked to Chris and I was like we need to have a talk with my mom at dinner because of what she just texted me before this dinner and it had to do with money. We'll be back after this. So like an hour before dinner, my mom was like texting me, Nikki, I'm looking at this menu. She suggested the restaurant, right? Because I said I had been there before, mm-hmm. like weeks ago or something, and she was like, what, what? she was like, let's celebrate Golden Globe. So it was her idea to go out and celebrate. And I go, Great. yeah, let's go to dinner. Why don't we go to this Louie place? which I love this place called Louis in, in St. Louis, Louis on Demon. Uh-huh. And, um, and Chris and I had been there like a week ago with uh, his brother. And I was like, yes, I can't wait to eat there again. They're so nice. And it's like so delicious. It's a little loud and not even a little. <laughs> I mean, I honestly think the decibel range in that place is on the verge of like the waiters and wait staff and the people who work at Louis. It is the best food I've had in St. Louis, the best service. So delicious. So much care. Honestly, the best meal you'll have in St. Louis that I've found but Ooh. the loudness i'm worried yeah. for everyone's eardrums in that place They're it screaming. is so <laughs> loud i don't know how you guys are gonna fix it is i love it you so much Louis. there's music in the background that's like a you can hear like a bass 
but it's mm-hmm. just like people are screaming in there screaming if you took people out of the restaurant and put them in your living room it would be insane yeah you'd go what is going on <laughs> are all these people deaf because they're all just screaming at each other you really have to yeah. scream and so because i don't know what i really can't find the source of it but if you work at louis i'd love to like help you um, I'm not going to help, but I'd love to <laughs> talk you give about them the money, acoustics. <laughs> give them money Stranger to re- territory. Re- re- to get yeah. them like foam for the walls yeah, so I could have a better dining experience. I would. <laughs> um, I have a funny thing about Louie too, by the way, that I want to say, I think I want to say I'm kind of embarrassed by it. But anyway, ba- going back. So my mom goes, this is an hour before dinner. Nikki, I'm looking at this menu. What can you even eat here? And I go, mom, I've been there before. I get a pizza with no cheese and I just ask them to dump every vegetable they have besides olives on the pizza, extra red sauce. And then I eat like probably one piece of pizza minus the crust. Cause I'm not huge on carbs because I grew up in the t- early two thousands and that just gives me anxiety. And then I eat all of the toppings off the pizza. This is who I am. That's what you're going to see from me. Sometimes I'll stack the <laughs> loose pizzas. So it doesn't look like just an empty pizza, but they don't judge me for it there. They just collect the plates. They don't go, Whoa, what is this? They don't like make me feel bad about my weird eating habits. I also get the well, broccolini. You can't hear them when they say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they literally can like mock me to my face screaming. And I wouldn't hear. I almost, I, I usually bring my, um, my, uh, you know, Taylor Swift, um, ear, ear things. Which, by the Air way, ones? in Europe, they gave you free ones at, um, oh. I think it was Zurich. They handed out free earplugs. And it was such a nice thing to do. If you're going to concerts and not using earplugs, you're, you're fucking insane. Or Louis. So, um, <laughs> I, so that's what I got. And so my mom was just like, what are you going to eat? We all know my mom. Love my mom. And I go, mom, I got it. I get vegan stuff there all the time. They know me and they'll, they'll, they'll take care of me. They like adapt things. They're so, and there's tons of stuff on the menu, tons of veggies. And so she goes, oh, and I'm looking at these prices. Nikki, I, what did I say? I can't, I want to read this to you guys. I want to know what nuts. the prices are too, because um, okay, my well, perception of prices. Yeah. Let me, like, go ahead. You tell me what you think the prices are that my mom yeah. said. Um, she goes, I, she goes, um, Nikki, I only suggested that place. Um, because he's because you said that the food was so good. I've never been there, but I feel bad that it's so expensive. <laughs> um, what do you what do you think an entree is there? Like if it's a fish entree, I would say is probably like forty six dollars. I'm guessing oh. it's around that. I was yeah. gonna guess like maybe, well, not fish, but let's say like an entree that Julie would get would be like eighteen dollars. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it, I think it's. Let's look at it. Because I, I really want to... For her to be a gas. So a pizza think- is twenty around $23. A main okay. entree is... The beef tenderloin is 45 but we're really in the range from 23 to... What about pasta? Do they have a pasta dish? Yeah, a pasta is going to be $23. That's okay. like a, a hamburger at McDonald's in LA is $23. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But my mom is used to exactly. like... My mom doesn't... My mom is... She goes, don't you call me cheap. I'm frugal. And I go, I hate that. I don't like that word either. Like that word's almost worse. I go, you are like cheap. Word. <laughs> so she goes, <laughs> <Am> I- <laughs> so she goes, I go, I go, you, sh-. she goes, I've, I, I've never been there, but I feel so bad that it's so expensive. I said, you should feel really bad. She goes, I know you don't care about that. And I go, no, I'm serious. This is the first time I've ever been mad about something like this, but I'm really pissed off that you suggested a restaurant I go to a lot. You and dad can split a water in an app, but that's it. I'm going to have to talk to my financial guy <laughs> oh to move God. some stuff around if you also want to split an entree, but we can maybe make it happen. <laughs> and she, and she was like, wait, wait, hold on. Is she, is her reaction like, finally, Nikki gets it. <laughs> no, at first I was like, maybe she's going to take me seriously when I go, you should be mad. But the thing is, she knows we've been through this a million times. I, I'm almost I've told Chris it's at the point where I feel like it's um just something she feels like she knows that it's not too much for me because she also just told me I should buy a two point five million dollar house. She was like encouraging that. So why would you encourage that and then go this place for a twenty three dollar pasta is too much like so it doesn't fit with what she's it doesn't align with what she's it's already just telling in the core of her being. Yes. Just like ingrained in her since childhood that those prices look and, especially restaurant prices for some reason specifically going out yes. to eat is such a extravagance for boomers yeah yes it, it mm. totally is and and chris even noted something at dinner because i go mom i need to talk to you about something like we 
we can't do this these theatrics before uh, I spend something anymore. <laughs> like if I say I'm going to spend something, I don't want any kind of pushback on it. I think the best way to acknowledge that it's a lot of money and that you can't believe it's so much money is to just thank me afterwards and say, wow, that was such a good meal. Thank you so much. It's so cool. We get to experience things like this because we have a daughter who takes us Mm -hmm. out like that makes me feel better than going, Nikki, no, you can't. (laughs) Because what that says to me is that I'm. I'm doing something bad with my money yeah. that I'm being mm-hmm. stupid, that I'm a, a putz that I'm a, um, that you are tricking me somehow into sp- like that. I'm th- that doesn't feel good to always no. feel like you are spending beyond your means. And then you have, this I love the me- word theatrics for that. It's like, you have to yeah. watch a little play every oh, time you want to every time. No, <laughs> Nikki, you can't for that. I'm not, I'll just drink from the tap. I'm not then, doing that. That for a water. No. And I'm just like, uh, then I the curtain can't falls. Yes. And it's just, and it's Chris made a point. He's like, you, f- Julie, you felt it was tacky for you to suggest mm. a place that is what you didn't know was so expensive. Mm. And you wanted Nikki to know that it was not you. Like you didn't know it was these price. Like you would never tell Nikki to buy something that was expensive. Good job, Chris. And so it was really yes. nice that he like advocated Any for her position winning. in that. And she was like, yes, that's exactly how I felt. And I understand that. And I also am my, my, you know, mother's daughter and I get <laughs> upset about, you know, a Uber canceling and charging me $10 or whatever. And I'll go like, why did it do that? Like I, that's ten dollars. I just wasted. And Chris will be like, "What is going on? Why are you freaking out about this?" Because it's not, it's money is just makes people crazy. So I understand it, mm-hmm. but um, there's a boomer thing that every I think every boomer does. I went on a road trip with my dad, who's a boomer, mm-hmm. um, and for for hours, for days, every single time we passed a gas station sign, he would go, "That's a dollar cheaper here. That's two dollars more expensive here." Yeah. Oh, look at that. We should pull even if we have a full tank of gas, you'd be like, we should pull over. That's fifty cents cheaper. And it's like we don't need to point out every single gas station price Did in every they county. Grow up with parents who were in the Great Depression. Is that what happened? And that's how it trickled down to them being obsessive about No, the grandparents were in the Great Depression. Right, their grandparents. No, maybe it was their parents. I think it's their parents. Their were like parents. at least kids during the yeah, Great Depression. Yeah. yeah. And so it trickled down. But it's they like, were born in the fifties. Uh, their parents were born in yeah the twenties. So yeah, I will say though that the other day, Emily, my social media girl, who is just teaching me, honestly, everyone needs to get young friends because I am How feeling old, so Emily? much younger. Because first of all, I listen to Las Culturistas. It's making me feel younger because they're younger. <laughs> and Emily is twenty five, I think. Okay, and she is just she's so smart and well like i can hang i can hang with her because she is mature for her age you know like i have some young friends who are just like seem like they'd be in their late 30s because of how smart they are and Mm -hmm. stuff but she still is like a a youthfulness to her that makes me feel hip because she like teaches me things (laughs) like even yesterday like last culture says you know they asked me to be on their to present on their show because i begged them to and then i wrote back screaming and i sent it to emily to be like look i used screaming because she will always say like screaming oh my god uh hyperventilating like she'll just say it but like with a period you know and another one i learned the other day is i'm sitting like someone if someone's like ex- expecting like i want like i'm like oh my god i'm about to tell you this good news like this big news people go i'm sitting i'm seated i'm seated <laughs> sorry i'm seated to anyone who is seated, like i'm sitting i'm seated and i go what does i'm cuz i sent emily a screenshot that someone had said i'm seated that we were on a text group chain and i go and he's a younger guy jonah from my pr team i go emily what does i'm seated mean and she was like oh it means like that i go is that a gen z term have you heard that she was i was like maybe he just made it up because that can happen too and she said mm. no that it means like okay i'm ready like i'm sitting here with popcorn i'm ready for the show to begin tell me what's happening like i'm seated which is a great phrase let's all use yeah. it like let's yep. not mock gen z for their phrases it's honestly so much fun and then i go maybe though it i'm seated is in reference to when before you tell someone something crazy you go are you sitting down and someone yeah. would go i'm seated Mm-hmm. So we oh, were yeah. like, it's maybe a mixture of those, but Emily, you know, um, wait, hold on. I, yeah. I I think I know the appeal of that because it what? gets ahead of it. So instead of like you telling them to sit down, they're getting ahead of it. They're, it's forward right. thinking. And and again, like I said, with these wait. Gen Z terms, it like gives you what? more. It allows for more, more thoughtful context of yes. the conversation. Uh, it allows more like, fun. 
I'm not. I, I love seated. I'm just. I'm just not confused by this term at all. I don't understand even why. Okay, if we you were in a conversation with someone where it was like, um, okay, you guys, you got to see this picture. You guys, I'm about to send you this picture. You're gonna freak out. And someone just goes, "I'm seated" in all caps. Wouldn't you be a little bit like, "What does that?" Mean? You would totally not think that's a weird thing to say or something like. You would just no. know that that. I mean, there's plenty of terms where I would have this. Well, it feeling. wasn't like I was confused. I just wondered if he made it up. Like, I understood what it meant. He's waiting yes. for the thing. I didn't know if it was something that other people were saying. And I mm-hmm. like that it is because I'm going to start using it. I do have to say, I, I am. I do appreciate Gen Z speak. I think I that love it. they're pretty cool. Um, after watching a bunch of like YouTube Gen Z YouTubers who just have their like monologue videos out there, which is like the mo- most popular YouTube videos now. Yeah. I'm like, these guys are funny and they are cool. It's they are so cool. Yeah. They are so cool, and th- I don't know. They're just like more emotionally advanced, so they've got that going for them, which we really didn't. Even though they still have immaturities about them because they are sure. have had, had less life. But Emily, the other day was, I was complaining about some cost of something. What was it? Oh, it was, she she videotaped me in Target, like getting new makeup because last weekend I totally <laughs> forgot my makeup bag. So we went to Target, and I was like making like a a, a an emergency makeup bag even though like all my makeup is like elf products and wet and wild and like in fact i left my i accidentally was using emily's makeup bag and i had my wet and wild foundation which wet and wild is like the cheapest brand brian it's literally like for a foundation it's five dollars and foundations that like that i should be using as a celebrity are probably like ninety dollars like that's how Uh, it's (laughs) less than mcdonald's if that's even a possibility of like what makeup would be yeah 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 (laughs) so um it's a costco uh glizzy so <laughs> i aren't they a dollar so i left the, and she goes nikki i'm dead or so whatever she sent me a picture of her wet and wild that i left in her makeup bag w- once she got home and i was like it's good it actually i go bethany frankel likes it too because i saw bethany frankel doing drugstore makeup reviews and i was like oh, she's on the wet and wild train too it's like it has like a gl- shine in it and i just mm. like it and i feel like all makeup is like trash for your face anyway none of it's regulated by the fda like it's mm-hmm. it's literally they don't they don't test it like they don't ridiculous they, it's i don't even know what they're testing on animals if they're not checking to make sure it doesn't like m- kill us and, and, right. and dump things into our the biggest organ in our body which is our skin it's insane but mm-hmm. she was like i'm dead you're using this and i go it's honestly so good and then she put it i go try it and she was like i'm what is she said like you know she was just like but she can said you another, tell me can you just give yeah. me some who is this person how did you meet them she they're is my 20- social media um, oh, okay got guru. it got it yeah, and she's, she's just like blown up my TikTok. She just like helps me feel she is like she's like my cheerleader. She like noticed one day I was down and she sent me these voice memos about like, I just want to let you know that. And I realized recently that you like voice memos, maybe more than text. But I just need you to know that the reason like you she was like, I had a goal when I first started working that I wanted to work with Nikki Glazer. And I am now working for Nikki Glazer, and it is the dr- <laughs> it is a dream job. Not only is it so much fun, but I am getting to grow so much. I'm learning so much. I'm having the best time. Like it was oh, so, so sweet. And she was like, "And you are a queen. You don't realize it. I don't think you understand your worth." But she was like, "Talk," because she was staring at a hotel. Like we were at the same hotel, and she was like a, 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 the wall next to me and Chris. <laughs> and she sent it over, and I go, "Chris, I just got a." I thought she was like maybe like leaving the job because she sent a really long voice memo, and I was like, "What's the this gonna be and chris and i are just listening into a bed and she's just like talking like this she's like seriously you are it's it was the nicest thing i've ever gotten and i'm like this girl loves me so much i love her so much she believes in me i like trust her because i think she's really cool and like if she thinks i'm cool it just is very validating when like a young person thinks you're so cool oh yeah but she goes nikki nicole glazer wet and wild foundation i said i like it bethany frankel does too she goes okay maybe i'll try it i said do it she goes okay period but i think she accidentally sent period you know like she was talking and she goes okay so i tried it and looks stunning <laughs> and then she, i go <laughs> it's stunning. good it's probably full of bad shit but what is it and she goes 100p that's the new thing too people mm. say 100p they don't say 100 percent. they're saying the 100p sign there's already the percent sign no no percent sign just 100p no, it's not cool anymore no well I, I think that's just it just works to say 100p and when she said stunning she it was question mark 
Yeah, she's like, I look wow. stunning. Like, That's she's cool. like, you know. So she's cool, but she was like, so she films me for this Target run, and I see a $9 lip gloss, and I'm like, fuck that. And I, like, threw back, and I'm like, That's bullshit. And I was like, she sent me the clip of it. She was like, I'm dying. This is so funny that you like got so mad about this nine dollar because i was gonna get it i go nine dollars fuck that and there were like kids around and i was kind of like oh i'm sorry and i was like oh that's my mom coming out of me for sure like i'm not paying nine dollars for fucking lip gloss and she was like nikki you get starbucks twice a day and each starbucks is nine dollars and she was like and you demolish it within one minute i'm like you're so right that lip gloss was worth it so it was all perspective Mm. so does um, she talk like this in real life or is it just over text um a little bit both like she it's it's it she definitely does talk like a gen zer but it doesn't make her seem less intelligent or like trying to be cool it's just like can you do an impression it's very, it's of her upbeat. talking sounds up oh 100p oh yeah it's like that yeah we'll get it done oh you what know did what, you do girl? today you know what girl okay you know like we'll get it done i mean we're, like yeah she talks like okay so like, if i go to the I, I go up to you you're her and i go what do you think of this shirt what do you think of this shirt I'm thinking about um, buying? I mean, it's cute. I mean, I mean, I think that one's better. Like she was, she was, she's, she's honest with me, but okay. she's like, like, she'd be like, um, okay. It's like giving tortured poets. Like she, she would use it's giving, <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Um, I mean like, and then she would reference something like, a, a like some kind of person, like someone who's, she's like, oh yeah. Like. That so and so wears stuff like that. Okay. And I'd be like, who's I so love, and so? And then I'd have to Google the person and find out. Uh-huh. I love Jojo Emily Siwa. as like as like a motivational coach that you're yes. carrying mm. around with she's you. This is so awesome. positive all the time. I love having her around, and she's like, "Yeah, girl, we'll get it." Like she's just like, da- and she won't accept <laughs> extra money for coming out on the road with me. She's like, "Oh, I already get paid to work for you. Like you pay, I co- pay a company that like employs her." And she's like, and I'm like, okay, I need to pay you extra. Like, you're giving me your weekend. You know, I pay for a flight and hotel. But she's like, the day that I ever accept a Venmo from you is the day like we are not working together anymore. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means, but okay. <laughs> but I'm gonna. F- but she's just like, she, that's this how weekend, she's gonna resign. She's yeah, gonna exactly. That Venmo. She's gonna oh, send no. a Venmo request. A request. <laughs> but she's just so sweet and she's so positive and like um yeah she just everyone i think everyone could really use an emily in their life i I didn't know i needed one so desperately until she came into it of just like a young person that kind of looks up to you and thinks i didn't even know Mm. she was like a fan of mine like i was just on a call with someone who she was on a zoom call um you know i found out about this the company she works for up high through my management company they they have another p- probably client who works with them. And so they were like, let's set up a meeting for you to talk to them about what they can do for your social media and what you need from them. And she was just on that. She was just a girl on a box in a zoom call. And I was like, Oh, she's really nice. But I didn't know that she had written down when she first started working for up high. They asked her like, what's your dream client? And she wrote Nikki Glazer. Like, oh, I didn't wow. know like that is, and, and that, but I didn't know any of that. So it was really cute that she's like kind of revealed it quietly along the way of like what I mean to her. It kind of feels like how I'd probably do a Taylor Swift thing, even though Taylor Swift is well aware at this, if she isn't, she's not paying attention like that. I'm a huge fan, but if I was to be in her orbit, I would probably just do Downplay. what she needed to do help her in the way she needed and not like inject any of my fandom until it was time to be like, in all seriousness, like you mean a lot to me. You know what I mean? Like she did it the right way. If you were, what job do you think you could realistically be hired for? If you weren't banter. famous, b- the banter, yeah, for her to go on talk shows, uh, punching up uh, stories she tells, or ah, um, yes. you know, she doesn't need the help by any means, but like even like you know things she says in between songs. Like I thought of a funny thing for Taylor to say um, after like there's a part in um, at the Eras tour when everyone's holding up their phones and doing like you know the lights like we don't have lighters anymore which by the way that would have back in the 70s when everyone did that with lighters and 90s and early 2000s wouldn't your fingers start like burning and melting (laughs) off like that would be really hard to hold for a whole song so i like that we use like our flashlights so we all do that during marjorie we're all like this with our flashlights yeah yeah it's it's the it's the new firework right drones and so we're doing this Mm. the whole song and then afterwards she's like you guys are so sweet you all held up your phones and like, I just think it would be a funny thing to be like, you risked wasting your battery life for me, <laughs> for, for me to have that special moment with this song. Cause we're really doing it for her. Cause it looks so pretty for her to look out. And she's singing about her grandmother who were all kind of like, 
paying homage to in this beautiful song about her grandmother oh, like who's passed away and her grandmother's voice is singing throughout because it's in the song and so it's like echoing throughout and she gets teary-eyed sometimes Swifties at one point all came together to hold a picture of her up for Taylor to like look at because we're like they were like trying to get her to cry um, <laughs> and I think Taylor appreciated even that like she's really sweet but I just was like oh I could punch up some stuff I mean honestly I could just offer her sincere um, like oh my god you look so fucking good right now like this is the greatest look you've ever had holy shit you just killed that performance like she doesn't need any more of that in her life but a sincere person to uh do exactly what emily does for me which is like that was exceptional what you just did or you look so good in that or like you know i've had famous friends before where they're constantly hearing all the compliments and you try to give them a compliment that really means something and and i've always Mm -hmm. said this like People think that famous people are always getting complimented, so sometimes they never get complimented because everyone's Mm -hmm. like, oh, they've already heard how great they were on this thing. But I would, you know, when I used to be friends with J-Law, I would, like, text her, like, oh, my God, you killed it on Fallon. That was so funny when you said blah, blah, blah. Like, I would give her a list, kind of, of things she said because I was just like, she might, people just might assume she already knows how great she is because why wouldn't she? She's J-Law. But, like, I would just try to find a way to... um. Yeah, just like because I know that I always still like to hear great show when I do have a great show, you know, not when it's just like cursory. I mean, I still want to hear it because when I don't hear it, I'm like, it must have been the worst thing ever. But like, I know my team when I've had a really good show afterwards, they'll be like, holy shit, that was great. Like, and it Mm -hmm. means something to me to hear that every single time. Um, And I always tell the story when I talk about this of Chris Rock at the Comedy Cellar. He had just gotten off stage and I was in the stairwell. And he was walking by and he had just murdered, right? Like did so well. And this was probably 2017 or something. And uh, he gets off. He's walking up the stairs and I'm like, I should say good job because that was really good. But like, he doesn't need to fucking hear it from me. And then I just was like, wait a second. Nikki, when have you, will you ever reach a point where you don't want to hear a good job after a set, especially from a comic who's it, like judging you from the stairwell. And so I just go, that was a killer set. And he just goes, Thanks. And he looked at me almost like, I, who knows? I'm projecting onto it, but it, it seemed to me that he appreciated it and was kind of like, I'm going to walk by this person. They're not going to just say what, acknowledge what just happened. Cause it's kind of like when you walk out of the comedy s- cellar room, it's like, Woo! and then you walk in the hallway and everyone, no one's clapping in the hallway because we're all just comics like waiting and it's kind of like awkward to like clap. So it just seems like weird to walk out of that and then walk by someone who's just like says nothing. I mean, Brian. We've been comedians who like have walked off stage and people don't say good job. And when you haven't done a good job, it really feels oh, horrible God, yeah. when no one can, when people go, how were they? That's what they ask. That's, that's the classic. Like every comedian knows you bombed. If a comedian watched your, you know, they at least saw the last minute of your set, which was rough because you, you didn't. Now they're just worried about their set because they saw how terrible the end of your set. Oh, was. I think that's interesting. I think they just want to be like, did you think that went well? Like they need to say something because they can't say nothing. So they go, how did you like them? And I'd rather someone go oh, rough night. Cause a rough really? night acknowledges that like, I know you're a oh, good it's comedian. The atmosphere. Yeah. I know you're a good comedian. I know that you're funny. That was just, I'm not going to pretend like if someone's tiptoeing around, maybe upsetting you because they said that that was a bad set. Then that means they really think you you're bad enough that that is something that would bother you. Mm. See, I just think we're all fragile enough, no matter how good we are, to never want to acknowledge a bad set. But I've yeah. I've had some, you know, bad sets well, in my yeah, life. I guess but like, if, I've if it wasn't a some friend, too. if it was a Chris Rock, if it was you like... coming off stage and you had a bad set, I would literally know it was because the audience sucked. Like yeah. I think we we I've had some openers that have just had not good sets because the the audience is too drunk. They don't respect the opener because they're there to see me. They don't understand how a comedy show runs. They just talk through their whole set. They're drunk. They're getting drinks, and the person just can't get the plane off the ground because no one's listening. So how the fuck are you supposed to get a laugh? So it's just the whole time it's a struggle. And mm-hmm. I've had some you know openers walk off like a little shell shocked. And I always just say to them, I fucking hate them. Like it's that's that's just like I fucking hated them. Like it's mm-hmm. as, because it's not about you. And that's very nice. It, but it's true. It's like I, yes, some I do think that it's kind of always. I always actually think it's on me. Like even if the crowd is, I mean, there's been some crowds that are just insane that you're just like I don't even want them to like me. But it kind of is always on us to win them over. We're performers. Like 
that's yeah. part of the skill like you can't always blame the audience i am not a comedian who will ever really lash out in an audience if they don't laugh like that's one of my biggest pet peeves is like when a comedian doesn't get a joke or like doesn't get a laugh and they go like oh are you offended like they act like the crowd did it usually pre get it or is offended by it yeah and then sometimes it happens so often that they just add it to their act to say that afterwards and then sometimes it'll get a laugh and they'll say what are you offended and you go (laughs) oh this just started working for you because it did it for months clearly because you have such a reaction but like getting mad at a crowd for like not getting you um it's it always to me is not a good look and i I, i'm someone who always will take blame uh, almost too much i think uh to a a fault but i do think it's that's part of our job i think it's joke per joke i mean to me the opener's job is to make sure that they are laughing by the time you get off stage so if you start off and they're and they're tight yeah as long as they're ready to go for the headliner yeah then that's fine you did your job even if your set was uh, was torturous yeah but like that for for me so if the if the audience just seems like tired or stoned or like not paying attention, then I will be like, "What's going on?" That's you know, good. like what's wrong with you? <laughs> like wake up! Like I would, I I do that sometimes. And yes. Just and it kind it kind of like sabotages my own set so that they wake up a little bit for the next person. Well, that's really nice of you because you're doing the job of an opener. But I think that you're right in in calling it out sometimes because it sometimes they need that like kind of substitute teacher energy of like the substitute teacher just like stops talking because the class is so rowdy and then everyone gets quiet because they're like oh she's mad at you know like it's like the only way to get attention is to either snap and be like what's going like to break the fourth wall a little bit even yeah. though it's kind of already broken when you have a live audience but okay we'll I don't be even back view- after- oh sorry, sorry go ahead no what do you send bl- it really end it no, no, I don't even view it as like something I do as a comedian or as an opener. I do it in real life. If if I if I say something and I don't get the response I want, then I'll I will do that in real life. I'll go, <laughs> "How did you not think that this was ex-? like I so that's just my personality also." Uh, of, just of like when that person out, said cool. Cool. Did yeah. you write back to it? No, no, I no. I just okay, I so go. maybe it's not you, <laughs> but No, in real life it is not over text. Right, it just right. Seems mean. All right. Uh, cool. All right, we'll be at back after this. <laughs> <laughs> cool socks. All right, so I have a twist for you in the theft in airports saga that you um, talk about frequently on this podcast. Yeah, I'm seated. Let's hear it. You're seated. Okay, so there has been a rash. A hundred people. You're going to be incredibly disappointed by the end of this, but you, there was there has been a rash of thefts at air, an airline terminals over the last year. And what? governments don't know what to do about it. Cities don't know what to Inside do about it. Inside the airport terminal, past past TSA. Well, the, or at baggage. The all the so I was looking at this article. I was like, I can't wait to send this to Nikki because there's all these thefts happening. They don't know what to do. Everyone's bags are being stolen. And then I look it up, and it's like all of them. Even they they qualify in all the articles. They're like all of these thefts are happening at baggage claim. Yes. I've, people so i don't know how it, it doesn't happen even more often it's yeah, insane it's so, it made me that think it about it like you're just you're not there yet it's almost and like and just anyone just can go in there please steal me thing. yes and anyone can go in there and it and almost feels like the why criminals haven't figured out this sooner is like how i feel about why we didn't figure out putting wheels on luggage sooner like yep. it's like it's right there, guys. <laughs> Do they not right want to pay for of- parking? Maybe, but it's worth it. There's treasures in every luggage. Yes. Every luggage, there's treasures or medications or something you can get high on. <laughs> um, and also, we were talking about wheels on luggage. Remember, you know, like it, there weren't wheels on luggage until like the early '90s, I think, maybe late '90s that became yeah. ubiquitous. It was Clinton. But then even. <laughs> Even but but and we all go. How did we not think about wheels on fucking luggage? Like we've been carrying around luggage for decades now, like yeah. m- maybe almost centuries. Just carrying this like wooden handle oh that you have to. I have. I know why. And then, but wait okay. a second. But then also, for t- for two decades, we were doing two wheels. <laughs> no one thought four wheels until like 10 years ago. And now every luggage yep. is four wheels. And four wheels, if you don't know, is so much better than two oh, wheels. Yeah. And they spin so around. So much better. And yep. so it's like, what, what could be next that we are not seeing that is right in front of us? What's six wheels? What's that going to be? <laughs> um, what were you going to say, Brian? 
Well, I just why when I think weren't about, we using wheels? When I think about <laughs> luggage, I think about the people in the you know fifties and and below who could afford to have luggage were rich enough to have servants. To carry the carry luggage for them, them, and they didn't care what the. Uh, see, I would have been a rich person, being like, the servants are going to break their back. Like, I yeah. really can't stand when I get a car service and it's an old person. I'm like the Larry David episode when it's like a woman, and he's like, <laughs> I don't want this. I really am like, this is bullshit. I want like an, God, a big man so who looks at my seventy pound suitcase and is like, this is nothing, and just hurls it in with one hand and is oh, not hurting yeah. his back. Oh, like, love that guy. That's kind of what I want. I'm sorry, I'm sexist and I'm sizist again <laughs> for uh, right. ages, ages. I guess. <laughs> I am able uh, ableist probably in terms of like their bone density. I like, I don't, but I don't want to hold this thing either. Like I'm, no. I'm packing it this way, knowing that it's going to get a heavy tag and that people who are in the back recesses of the airport or have back support straps on. <laughs> I hope I, I don't, yes. I don't even like it when the Southwest woman has to hurl it onto that little thing. I'm like, you poor, no. these, these people are beating I up their know. bodies and they're at the ticketing counter and they don't Repetitive have any kind of back. Injuries. Oh, it's so, it's a, a shout out to you guys at the ticketing counter and anyone who deals with baggage. It's, it's fucked, but you're so right about that, Brian. Like no one gave a fuck back in the early 20th century or the mid 20th century. They even had trunks instead of oh. luggage. Insane. Oh my God. Like a rich debutante would show up at the <laughs> dock with a bunch of trunks. And a briefcase. I mean, men were carrying around briefcases themselves. Yeah. Why not put a strap on it? Because it was gay? Do you it think it gay. looked too much like a purse? Yeah, it was and way that's gay. That's what women did. But even no, women didn't have, like, you know, um, what's it called? Crossbody bags. <laughs> like, yeah. we just had our bosoms. Yeah. Yeah. We had to hurl those around. Should put a wheel on that. <laughs> when I was in college, I used to use a messenger bag instead of a backpack. Remember the messenger bags? What happened yeah, to yeah, those? Yeah. Nobody uses um, those anymore. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't know. I, I love the good messenger s- bag. Yeah, I think you could bring it back. Uh, fanny packs already, are the new purse, though. I see so many girls with my same purse. The black, I have a blue, fanny pack fanny every pack. day. It's I always go. Fanny we have the same pack. purse. You did, Avi does? <laughs> yes, he's on the fanny pack train. Yeah, They're fanny amazing. packs are great. Does he wear it around his waist or does he around, wear it like around? Right under his belly instead of oh putting my God. all this stuff in his cargo uh It's pockets. so convenient. It's yes. amazing. It's um, so much better than pockets. I'm proud of so him. So I wanted to talk about a thing that I did for um what, one of my favorite things to read is the... Th- things like items I can't live without. What is the name of the t- title? The title of it. I'm sorry, I the didn't set this up correctly. Yeah, it's it's by the strat. The strategist is one of my favorite websites. By the way, it's Here. by the um, New York Magazine. I got and it. And it's a it's for consumers, people who buy a lot of shit. It's like it's for everyone because if you want the if you want actual like reviews of things that aren't paid, unless they kind of sometimes you can tell when they're paid. I think they even have to say they're paid, but generally these are just people who are hired that have great taste. In literally everything, and they get people to review different things and try out every kind of Cuisinart or, or every kind of um, yoga mat. Like, if you are looking for a product, go type in the go to the strategist website, and they will have like a listicle of like which ones are the best with links and everything. And um, so, final thought: one of my favorite things that the strategist does, this website offshoot of, of New York Magazine, is called um, Celebrity Shopping, and it's what blah 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 can't live without and they do a different celebrity every week and honestly i have bought probably thousands of dollars worth of stuff from this and i am rarely disappointed because i do feel like they the people who interview you for this do a really good job of getting you to pick products you can tell when celebrities have phoned it in and it's like the whole thing they talk about is just like whatever lotion company their best friend started and it's like eight hundred dollars a jar mm-hmm. or it's like mm-hmm. they're trying they're like uh, they do like a meditation book that they read once they're trying to seem smart a lot of them talk about journals and pens they like and like oh, quill pens and you're like you're trying you're trying to get laid family? through this list yeah um so my list i just want to share because i put a, a gigantic amount of thought into it because i am a fan of this thing and so when i got interviewed by um who did this, uh, by jordan mcmahon mcmahon uh May- mahon mcmahon um mm-hmm. he was like wow i he even noted like i haven't seen someone i haven't interviewed someone to put some this much thought into it's it i was like because i'm a fan things and it's like i i picked things that i needed 
I didn't want to, I, di- I made it sure that I didn't want anyone to think I looked cool. Like none of these products were picked so that you would think I was something that I wasn't. And by the way, my list was way longer. The first one I gave and I took things off that I did. I checked my ego and I'm like, you're putting this on to seem like cool. Cause you're worried who might see it. But these are just things I think everyone should have. Not everyone, but most people. First of all, my halo sleep eye mask. By the way, they gave the wrong link at first, and there was a picture of one that looked like a migraine helmet. And I was like, people are buying the wrong mask because of me. It's the first thing on my list. Switch out that photo right away. So it's my favorite sleep <laughs> yes. mask by far, my halo sleep eye mask. It's $10 on Amazon. I literally buy probably 20 of them a year because I lose them on planes and stuff. They are the best eye mask. I recommend them. They they are They are cooling. I don't know how they do it. They have a cool. Wait, they, is it this? Is that the one I it, turning around? Yep. Uh, uh, that's uh, pretty close to it. I think that's probably yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's you what, bought me this. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I, use I buy it every everyone. day, and now I can't sleep without it. God damn it! It it truly like you said yesterday. It makes you a little bitch. <laughs> like it makes you like I can't sleep bitch. without my my face mask. Okay, and then the thing I've always talked about on the show um, before. In case you're new to it, it's The Ordinary. It's by The Ordinary. It's $10. It is my favorite serum that I use on my face every single day. I've used it for 10 I cannot believe you put that out there. 10 years. I know. I was like (laughs) gatekeeping it for a while. But you know what? I have have other ways to get this stuff because it's just 100% plant squalane. And by the way, everyone's putting it in their shit now. Squalane is like the new thing that people Mm. put in their skincare lines. It's so cheap. You guys just get 100% plant-derived squalane. The Ordinary, $10. I use it on everything. It's just moisturizing without being oil. Oily, but it, it goes on like an oil it's slick mm. it absorbs great you can put it on the morning and you are moisturized the rest of the day i'm not kidding you girls you if you if you stay moisturized all day off of whatever serum you're using because i use i've used every fucking serum in the book tell me what that is because no, hyaluronic acid is not going to keep you moisturized and no creams keep you moisturized all day all through the night they always, you always, they absorb quickly and then you got to put something else on. This keeps you moisturized all day. Can't, literally would, that's my number one product I can't live without and I would put it above Starbucks. And I didn't put Starbucks on this list because you, you know, everyone already knows. Yeah. Then there is a um, eyeliner that I found when I was traveling in Europe for my tour. It's the only eyeliner you use. It's a pen. It's like if you want to do a, a perfect wing, it just gives you the blackest line. It's $5. I mean, I'm not even wow. meaning to be give you bargains here. It's by Calligraph, C-A-L-L-I-G-R-A-P-H, Pro Precise 24-Hour Waterproof Matte Liner. Holy shit. It's so good. It's $5 on Amazon or no, at Catrice. Well, you can find it anywhere, but it takes a little while to ship to you sometimes because it's back order and it's from Europe. Um, the next thing. <sighs> I can't say enough good things about this. The Bowen Oak karaoke microphone. Okay. Mm. It is. I got it. A karaoke microphone sent to me because years ago, because I was doing a, some kind of thing for, I think glamor magazine where I, I, I got products that were like really high end products. And then they gave me the low end version, like the, the rip off one. And I had to see which one I thought was better. And maybe I liked the cheaper one. I, for a karaoke mic, absolutely not. You got to go with the Bowen Oak. It's $120, B-O-N-A-O-K, karaoke microphone. It has a built-in speaker, like a Bose mini speaker that you would like use in your house, but it's on the microphone. And so when you sing into it, you have amazing acoustic, like a, amazing sound. It is like your own little amplifier next to your microphone and so if you are someone who likes singing or likes karaoke they are essential if you have kids that like performing it just it's it's just a it's an amp system in your hand and it's awesome and it does effects on your voice so you can sound way better and 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 i've talked about it on the podcast before it used to be one of our like singers where i go karaoke mode but it's amazing (laughs) um skipping ahead the nulixi dual folding cell phone stand okay that i'm i'm buying that dude noah what does it do? Buy three of them because you'll lose. They will. They are so compact. They fold up. It's just a little phone stand. So like when you're eating that. or something, you just like it stays sturdy. It's got great movement. It's just a well engineered phone stand. It is the one of the best thing engineered things I've ever seen. It's so simple. And why do There's, you need this? 
Um, sometimes I'm like stuff. eating oatmeal and I want to like be on my phone and I want to read something or look at something, but I don't want to hold my phone. It, I want my phone perched up so that mm, it's reading okay. and I can just scroll with one hand. We're watching. Or if I'm doing an Instagram live, I can perch it and then talk uh-huh. or I'm filming something hands free. I get that. Or if it's, you're watching a YouTube video while yes. I'm making a smoothie or something. Absolutely. Oh my God, yeah. Brian, you will die. It's so, oh, they're no. so good. A hundred P, a hundred P. I'm dead. I'm dead. A hundred P. You're, you're seated. Can I, so you're screaming. I love it. Lying down in a coffin. I yes. love it because there are so many of them that I got overwhelmed trying to figure yes. out which fucking thank iPhone you. stands to buy. Mm. So thank you, Nikki Glazer, yes. for putting that on your you're list. So right, Noah. It is. Wait, so, this is also like dog beds. If anyone has a great little oh. dog dog bed to recommend, I am overwhelmed at the options and I, I can't have pick it. one. I mean, everyone really? has it. We already know what it is. What Let is me it? look at it. I just literally bought another one for my dog because my old one was like looking a little ratty so i was like let's get you a new one give, every dog loves this bed they cannot get enough of it give and me I'll, I'll look, look it up, it up right, now. right now i'll yeah. keep going so by the way that stand phone stand was called the new lixie n-u-l-a-x-y it's on amazon 15 dollars um i put in a guitar a baby taylor guitar because it's 450 dollars. that's a little bit of a price point but if you're buying a guitar and you want to learn it's small you can figure out how to learn. I was just trying to encourage people to pick up guitar later in life and you can travel with it. And if it gets like beat up on the plane and they make you check it, like it's not the biggest, like you're, it's not like a, you know, $2,000 guitar that you're like, it's the neck broke. It's $450 and it sounds great. And you can travel everywhere with it. I just thought it was good. Um, This one I've kind of backed away from, but I do believe when I do use it, it's amazing. Um, red light therapy apparently is like it takes years to actually start showing like the red light therapy masks you wear like whatever the LED masks the thing they're doing to your face won't show up for a year like so whatever college in their building has to take a year to build so you'll never see res- direct results from this stuff right away hmm. and that makes me discouraged to use it because I've bought mm. I spent thousands of dollars on red light masks and different things and I just don't use them but the solo wave four in one red light therapy starter kit it's like this little wand and it vibrates and it has a red light on it, which is like, whatever, who cares? But the vibration and just the gliding on your face, you could do it with the squalane. It's so relaxing. It definitely depuffs and because of the slight vibration and it feels so good. And you feel like you're Haley Bieber after you use it. You're just mm-hmm. like glowing and you feel like you just did something good for yourself. It's mindful. You can just sit there with your new phone on your new Lixie stand and just do it gently across your face. And it's $262, but I really do think it's awesome. Um, and works really well and I like it um, and then there's a charcoal deodorant that makes you smell like nothing and I think I've talked about it on the podcast before but mm-hmm. it's called purely great charcoal deodorant you stir it up and if you literally don't want to smell for like a day swab this stuff on your pits it's natural it's charcoal you do have to stir it up and it does come with a little stick like the stick you know that you get to in those cheese crackers the red yes. stick it's uh-huh. literally exactly that those. stick but it's wow. white same. and you stir it up mm. and it's almost like that same cheese consistency, but it's like chalk and water <laughs> that you got to stir. And then you get it to that cheese consistency. You put it in your pit, you close your pit and you just like uh, get, take the the little stick out and you just like kind of, and then you just mush your pits together like this and you will not smell for days. If you don't want to N- literally zero scent, it's wow. wild. Chris and I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> I don't use it every day because it's kind of a pain in the ass with the ladle and stuff and you got to stir it and sometimes I'm in a rush, but it's called Purely Great. And um, if you want a natural deodorant that honestly does not make you stink. And if you've heard intrusive thoughts episodes, I have problems with natural deodorant and sticking stinking. I've had that in my past. And so I had to go back to like the aluminum kind, but this has made it so I can when I want to have a natural deodorant and not smell at all we don't even understand how it works because chris has tried every natural deodorant we all know they don't work like they work kind of but this one actually does works it's purely great it's 13 dollars on amazon okay wow. what is the dog bed the dog bed is 24 dollars and 30 cents on amazon okay i'm getting it right now best friends by sherry the original the original calming donut and it Ooh. comes in many different colors and i'm telling you my dog cannot get enough of this thing. He oh, Marion has else. this. I tried it's to the, order this last night, Brian, but it's back ordered. I mean, everybody knows it's the best bed. I mean, I, I see other people when I go. Sometimes I'm on Instagram and I see someone else's dog in that bed. And I'm like, oh, you know, you know that that's the best bed. OK, I'm getting the taupe shag 
Oh, yeah, it's fifteen ninety nine. Actually, yeah, it's. I, I needed this bed this week, and it was back ordered till Tuesday, September third. But I'm getting it anyway because you know what? She should bed. have two beds, and it's the best yes. one. And we'll see which one she chooses. I also have a good harness recommendation. If anyone's looking for, if your dog slips out of its harness, tr- gets out of it, will if I put a harness on it, she freezes and won't move. Oh, okay, she literally well, can't. Ima- like, and then I'll pull her, and she'll start working, but then she'll freeze again. She can't understand that her body. That's can what my move. cat does. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. That this will fix that, but this harness is you cannot get out of this harness. I tried like ten Ooh, different what? harnesses with Jack when I first got him, and he slipped out of all of them except for How this could one. He slip out of a harness that goes around your legs like pants. He they pulls backwards. Out. He's so small and oh, he's dry. smart. He okay. pulls backwards and he slips his neck out going in the opposite. And you're like, try- and sometimes you're pulling to like, come with me. And he pulls yeah. the other way. And then he lifts his leg and gets out. So He's what's got- it called? The new harness is called, um, well, this is the harness I've had for him for now, like six years. It's called Rough Wear. R-U-F-F-W-E-A-R. I feeling. Okay. Yeah. Do you know the Rough Wear? No, I just uh, had, when you said rough, I was like, oh. Oh, be yeah. No, they're going to do the a pun. Now, um, on Amazon, it says currently unavailable. See, that's what I'm saying. These, the shit sells out. I'm a little yeah. I, I'm worried about Chewy. some of these products now. I've, I've always had a great Chewy. experience Chewy.com is Chewy. amazing. Chewy. They're so amazing. Their customer um, service is great. Oh, the dog has a name, by the way. <gasps> we named her oh officially God. yesterday. Oh my Should we save it for next week? Seated. Okay. It's seated. <laughs> Wait, is this going to no. be? A Are you guys seated hanger? for the name? Everyone's seated. Seat, seated. Seated. Get seated. Okay. Okay. Exclamation point. Goldie. Oh. And it's, not, it's Golden Globes didn't hurt this oh name. My God. <laughs> but I love it. it was like, oh, that's a sign we should go for that because it's kind of like funny mm. that that happened in my life around the time I got her. Yeah. And it sounds like girly, which, which is what we've been calling her, but we weren't like sure of that. And that's she is yeah. golden. And our pet sitter told us. She's just a golden dog. Like she's a gold. She has like she's just got golden energy. And we, she said that uh, like a month ago. And we were like, oh, that's kind of funny. Maybe we should call her Goldie. So we were flirting with it. And then the Golden Globes. And mm-hmm. then um, uh, and then yeah, Matt Green, my brother in law, yesterday texted our group chat like, "Congrats on Goldie." And I was like, "Oh wait." I go, "This is her name." I go, "That's what we're naming the dog." And so Chris uh, agreed last night. So it's official, Goldie. Yeah, Yay. Goldie Hawn. Yes, such a cute name. Like she's love it. she's a golden girl. We love her. Um, thank you guys for listening to the podcast this week. I hope you enjoyed the extra episode. We'll be ne- back next week. I am in North Dakota this week. If you are near there, there's there's people up there. I think um, I'm there on Saturday um, at a casino. But check my website. I don't know exactly the town. Ta- New town, North Dakota is where I'm going. New town, North Dakota. Hope you to see some of you there. I don't know who's going to be there. I've never been to North Dakota. I've never performed in North Dakota. We'll see how it goes. I can't wait. Um, lots of tour dates available. NikkiGlazer.com. Love you guys. Don't be good. Bye.